All right, guys. So before we get into Star Trek, I want to talk a little bit about The Sound of Freedom, uh, mm-hmm. which has been kind of like a sleeper hit that the mainstream media is trying really, really hard not to comment on. Um, so we have uh, this article from uh, The Hollywood Reporter, where it says, Sound of Freedom crosses 100 million in the U.S. And it's kind of an interesting article because it kind of goes through um, the the path that this movie's taking, where it's slowly rolling out into more and more theaters. It's beat out Indiana Jones uh, and uh, The Dial of Destiny. But just at the end of this article, I don't know if you guys caught this, they, they had to go and, and talk about uh, how it's being discussed on QAnon message boards. Yeah. I have that. no idea what QAnon message boards are, but it also says, and, uh, and Caviezel <laughs> spoke at a QAnon convention in Las Vegas. Now, Vader, I've never heard of a QAnon convention out here, have you? <laughs> uh, There's no I, QAnon actually, convention. Actually, I, I have heard of something along those lines. I think it was maybe a offshoot that they got in a little, uh, maybe a little small convention room when, when uh, there was a Republican Trump rally or something. Oh, yeah. So they're talking about like an actual GOP event. That's probably the event now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly don't know. No, there. I do believe I have seen stuff in, in the papers here about um, QAnon gatherings. But, you know, QAnon, uh, I don't even know if that's still the thing. Is that still a thing? I thought it kind of like went away. I thought it died. So, um, I yeah, I... I it's very strange, right? I For mean, the longest these, time I thought I was these a people, meme. these people are going to anytime they want to try to demonize or or do anything, and and brand it as neocon or far right uh, lunacy, they're just going to say queuing on this, queuing on that, and attach it to it. So it yeah. it's it is what it is. It's just more. I I, I I just found it interesting that that the Hollywood Reporter just couldn't report on the numbers. It had to kind of throw that. Uh, that in there yeah uh brian one of the interesting things about this is that the flash has made about 107 million dollars domestically at the box office it's now out on streaming by the way i know but I have, but, uh, but um but this movie sound of freedom looks like it's gonna overtake the flash's box office numbers <laughs> what do you think about that i mean listen i i like sound of freedom um I saw it July 3rd, the day before the opening. My wife managed to get tickets. She was really in, uh, into it. She loves uh, Jim Caviel. And um, Caviezel. and she's and she's she's very religious. I mean, he's he's an attractive man. And he's uh, and he's Jesus. Right. So she's religious, he's attractive. It's like a win-win. No, but uh, she got tickets for the day before. So we saw it on July 3rd at like one o'clock in the afternoon. And um I thought it was great. It was a great movie. Um, I think it was really well done. I thought it had a great message. And you can't really you can't really knock the message. In fact, whoever is out there thinking this is a controversial take, like protect kids, like someone needs to investigate investigate that that guy's internet browser history. <laughs> um look at the 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 whole message of this of this movie is not some QAnon conspiracy, it's actually based on a true story. And the the only message, there's no political politics here. There's no right, there's no left, there's no sideways or whatever you want to call it. There's one message. Uh, kids aren't for sale. And if you disagree with that message, fuck you. That's all I got to say about that. When it comes to The Flash, I'm bummed out uh, because I I like The Flash, like a lot. I like the movie. I didn't like the, yeah, there's some problems, there's some graphical issues or whatever. What's wrong with you? Look, the CGI is yeah. off, but I liked the movie. I did. I, yeah, I liked like the movie. movie too. Yeah, I, like I the saw movie. it on streaming again, and I was like, this movie's great. Uh, I don't know why people don't like it. I don't know why anyone watched it. I, <laughs> it. Maybe that's why I'm being canceled on YouTube, because I liked <laughs> The it. Flash. That's it. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. Um, Sound of Freedom deserves the success it's getting. It's a good movie with a great message, and... Yeah, God's children are not for sale. Period. The end. But when it comes to the Flash, I don't see a problem with that movie either. It was a fun movie. There's no political messaging. There's no weird uh, ch- uh, check box checking. It's just a great movie. Well, one of the one of the weird aspects of the Flash is that you have the leading man Ezra Miller, who's been accused of grooming right young women. That's the problem. Then, the the actual actor's nuts. 
he's going up against a movie a, that's about rescuing children right. from people like that. Right, right. Um, Good point. Odin, Good point. Odin, I want to throw this to you because The Sound of Freedom cost $14 million to make. And uh, it's made over $100 million compared to stuff like The Flash and Indiana Jones, which are upwards of $300 million. So this is a hugely profitable movie, even if it doesn't like beat out the box offices of like Barbie or Oppenheimer or like whatever. Um, they've probably made more money off of The Sound of Freedom than any of the studios have off of their big releases. What's your take on that? Oh, it's, it's absolutely fact because the production budget when it was originally made about five, six years ago was about 14 and a half million. But I believe the amount that was actually paid by Angel Studios, who did not make the movie, they, they bought the rights to distribute mm -hmm. it. I think they only paid about five million. Yeah. So you think about that and ultimately for Angel Studios, it is just complete return. On, on investment because they paid that five million to get the rights and then they probably paid money for marketing. So you're looking at them probably looking at around a $90 million plus take at this point, as far as net profits are concerned. And it's just gonna continue to make more money. And uh, what's amazing about it all is that you were mentioning before about the other movies. Well, they the numbers just updated and Sound of Freedom now does indeed officially have a higher domestic than The Flash, 110 versus 107. Nice. And with $110 million after being out for just a couple of weeks, you have a chance where this film could potentially beat out even Elemental's domestic of 133 and maybe a little farther shot, but hey, still possible, could end up beating Dial of Destiny's 154 million domestic. That's so, awesome. That that Jim you know. Schlamazel guy is quite the draw. <laughs> exactly. That's how Brian said. Yeah. But uh, Caviezel's wait, 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 wait. great. I can't say his name. Yeah, Caviezel's great, um, and he's been really good in, in promoting it. But that article you mentioned, like one of the things that drives me crazy about how the media is covering this is that you have both the overt and also the subversive um, attacking of, of this movie, right? The overt, the, the overt stuff is when... You have the mentioning of QAnon, QAnon adjacent, right? This has become now a term. It's like, well, we're not necessarily directly connected with QAnon, but a QAnon adjacent um, because it happens to talk about some of the things that are actually true versus, you know, anything else that was mentioned. But you then also have that that, that byline or that, uh, that subtitle that was on that article. And how did it describe the movie? Faith-based. That is a subversive tactic because a lot of yeah. people, when they hear the term faith-based movie or religious movie, or anything like that, they immediately will shut off to it. Because I know for me, I typically don't like faith-based movies. Because, because they're, they're bad, usually not, bro. They're usually not they're, very good, right? Yeah, yeah so they're, a lot they're of people usually have really the, bad. A lot of people have the perception that this movie was made by Angel Studios, was you know completely made as a faith-based movie, right? God's the children are for sale. The fact that just God is mentioned all of a sudden somehow makes this a, a crazy Christian uh, right-wing movie. And it's like, that's actually not. It was made by 20th Century Fox back when it existed, and then it was put on ice by them in Disney before Angel Studios bought the rights to it. So, again, it's doing phenomenally well. It's going to make massive return on its investment. It already has. And they've already talked about how they want to make more movies about the the things that Tim Ballard had to deal with. So, um, again, which also could be both a good thing and bad thing. Good because it continues to expose this stuff. Bad in that this would then be Angel Studios putting their full force behind it versus it being another studio making it so. Who knows exactly what that would mean for it in the long run as far as its quality. I imagine it would still be really good. But yeah, it's it's very, very good right now for Sound of Freedom. All right. Before we get to Rob's take on this, I want to throw this to Dave because he's over in Ireland. Dave, have you heard much well, about well, uh, Sound of Freedom over there? Well, there's two points I want to make before. Well, the first thing is on the subject of faith-based films, there was one I only recently saw. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're whether you're religious or not. It's just a, actually just a really good story. Whatever way you want to look at it, it's a film that was made in 2016. It's called Risen, and it is considered an unofficial sequel to um, Passion of the Christ. And it stars uh, Joseph Fiennes as a Roman soldier who's tasked with investigating where the body of Jesus has gone from the tomb. And it's, it's actually, it's a, it's a really, it's a really good movie. It's well worth it, especially if you're looking to have your faith restored. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a beautifully shot film, beautifully acted. I well recommend it, whether you're a religious person or not, but yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big story here as well. Sound of freedom, but actually there was something else that I, you talked there about subversive elements surrounding this story. And there was something that I did want to address. So, on Twitter, in certain circles, there has been this screenshot that's been going around uh, about something that it's claimed that Tim Ballard said, but I have found absolutely no evidence of this whatsoever. And it's, it's again, I suppose, adjacent to the, the QAnon conspiracy type thing, which is that apparently this guy said 
this is the claim uh, that he was uh, thinking that microchipping children was a good idea. OK, now people have shared this screenshot around and having looked into it, there is absolutely no evidence that he said this. At least I, I can't find any. I cannot find the original source for this screenshot. So uh, what I should say to people as well, like there can be subversive elements on both sides that want to discredit things and everything. So uh, sorry, if you're hearing a squeak in the background, that's my dog looking to get out and it's raining, <laughs> and, you know, and oh, by the way, he was hit by a car a week and a half ago. Oh, no. um, he's an absolute unit. So he didn't even break a bone, but that was very, very traumatizing. <laughs> he broke the car. Yeah, he broke the car more than anything. <laughs> but he wants to get out and it's raining right now and he's got cuts on his on his feet. So I have to be very careful. He wants to go smash some more cars. (laughs) (laughs) So if I have to, if I have to run out, just look out. Is it, what was it? One of those weird European, like eco cars, the (laughs) go-karts? Yeah, Yeah, I don't know. He's uh, sorry about this. I'm getting very distracted here. So, but yeah, that was my, that was my take on it. Sorry. All right. So uh, Rob, I wanted to ask you, like you're in the heart of Hollywood out there. Um, what's the buzz around town that you've been hearing about this movie? And what do you think are the implications for like smaller budget films because of this one? Because the studios have been doubling down on like their budgets, 300 million, you know, like, yeah. like productions. And this one, $14 million and it's making over 100. Well, I have so many thoughts about this. First of all, you know, I went and saw Sound of Freedom. It's a good movie. You know, if you're if especially if there's there's exploitation elements about it, you know, it, it feels like something you it, it's it's one step away from being a movie like James Glickenhaus might have directed in 1980, something like The Exterminator or The Soldier. Uh, Tim Ballard is a is a controversial figure in Utah where he has his uh, like foundation, how he raises money, like all people like this and, and his exploits come under scrutiny and. <clears throat> So he's already a divisive figure. Then you have Jim Caviezel, who played Christ in Passion of the Christ and Mel, Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ. And he he has been a very outspoken QAnon supporter of those beliefs. So there's all these things that are swirling around this movie that really aren't the movie itself. And if you go in and watch the movie itself, I think it's a very effective movie. There's a reason 20th Century Fox made it. You know, there's another horror film called The Empty Man that was directed by Dave uh, Dave um, Pryor that almost got shelved as well. But Pryor basically said no and was able to finish The Empty Man, although you can't, which is a great horror movie and you can't get it. So it was a the sound of freedom was a casualty of the Disney Fox merger that was able to get out. And by the way, I find Angel Studios to be an interesting player in Hollywood. They have a movie coming out called The Shift. Now. It's clearly by their name, they're a quote unquote faith based company. But the shift looks really interesting to me. I'm like kind of a horror science fiction hybrid, very multiple universes. I watched, saw this trailer. I'm like, this looks like kind of like the Adjustment Bureau by way of the Devil's Advocate or something. I don't know. I'm like, I'll watch that. But um, here's the thing about I grew up, I'm a Jew. I grew up watching faith based movies Ben Hur, The Ten Commandments, The Robe. I mean, half the Hollywood epics that came out in the 50s when we uh, went over to widescreen to to combat television were faith-based. I I have never had a problem with with faith-based movies that are even about religions that I I own Risen on Blu-ray. I I have no problem with faith-based films. What I have a problem with are movies that aren't good. And the problem is a lot of these faith-based companies, they want to compete with what they see as the amorality in Hollywood. So they want to offer their audiences an alternative. Kirk Cameron has been in a lot of these movies, even a Nicolas Cage, like the left behind. I thought the left behind book series could do a, 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 make a pretty compelling series of movies or they just haven't been able to do it very well. So I don't have a problem with a faith based movie from uh, just like I, I would love to see, like I'm obsessed one day. I would even love to make a movie based on the book of Job because I've always loved the story oh my of god that would be amazing it would be that, amazing. That, would, that would almost be a comedy by the way but yeah it's, i mean well well robert heinlein wrote a book called uh job a comedy of comedy of justice i think he yeah it. A, tra- a dramatic tragic comedy that would yeah, be a, a, a satire you know modern right. and and i i you know with his like why, nagging wife in the background the only oh, thing dude, left yeah. for him was his was his wife that wouldn't shut up wouldn't stop talking yeah it would be <laughs> And I love, like, I, look, all of Western civilization, all of Judeo-Christian culture and the, come from the Abrahamic, and and, and uh, Islamic culture comes from the Abrahamic 
religions. I mean, we all so if to have an understanding of literature and Western civilization, you should know your scripture. So I have no problem uh, with faith based movies. This film is dealing with the subject matter almost in an exploit ex exploitation film kind of a way. Who doesn't want to go save kids? And if Tim Ballard talked about even microchipping kids, the problem is someone's like, does he mean like the number of the beast? Oh, Look, gosh, we microchip our we microchip my I have three dogs. They're all microchipped. <laughs> if yeah. they run away, it's so you can find them again. And this idea of if, if children are microchipped and they're trafficked, you could find them. So I, I it wouldn't surprise me that Tim Ballard made this comment because having a military background why not surveillance it doesn't necessarily right. mean he's talking about who it's the uh, evils of whatever he's thinking about well if kids are kidnapped and we had a way of finding them yeah he's, he's just trying to think of the best way to to uh, uh, stop the problem that's i mean the, mm -hmm. the the thing that i the thing that i don't like is that everybody is disingenuous everybody on both sides are constantly trying to curry favor and the fact of the matter is is Sound of Freedom a good movie? And I think the answer is, well, yes. Now, it might, it, there might be social pressures and factors that are feeding into its success, and certainly Angel Studios has played that up because they've turned a $5 million investment into a $100 million grossing film. This is a wildly... By the way, from a profitability standpoint, a movie like Sound of Freedom current in its current state might actually make more profit than a movie that cost 200 million that grossed a billion in terms of its actual profitability in terms of percentages because you know it, 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 films today are way too expensive the studios the reason that our streamers are ailing is because a, a show like citadel costs 300 million dollars because it's reshot people don't know what they're doing they don't know how to, i mean movie making has been the same for 100 years Nowadays, the people that are making things and the people at the studio level are probably lesser qualified than they've ever been in terms of making these things and understanding how to oversee the making of these things. And it's really frustrating. It's really frustrating to see it's killing the industry, all this profligate spending because, oh, let's just, we'll have a thousand VFX artists. We'll fix it all. We'll shoot it all on green screen stages. Well, all that means you're going to jack up the price and post. And with the, with the, 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 log jams and the effects companies it, it, it's a terrible the industry is in a terrible state because the people that are working in the industry for the most part are not as experienced as they should be i mean i'll tell you something there's nothing better than seeing a film crew at work because nobody can solve problems faster than an actual team on the ground making a movie because every second has a dollar value associated with it i know i'm kind of rambling but sound of freedom did what all movies should do that are successful they connected with their audience they may be a product of their time but the fact is as brian said you go to this movie it's entertaining it has a message that kids are not for sale you walk out of that movie thinking you've seen something important it makes you feel better about yourself and about the world we live in that there are people like maybe he's the fictionalized version of tim ballard but that there are people out there fighting the good fight and that's what movies have done for a hundred years and that's why it's making money. Yeah, just actually on that point, um, I probably should have looked this up earlier, but just a little while ago, the Western Standard, which I've posted this link in the chat there, WesternStandard.news has an article, Sound of Freedom's Ballard denounces microchipping children. So this is addressing what we've just brought up, this, this screenshot that's been going around on social media. The real-life main character, Sound of Freedom, has taken to social media to dispel allegations his movie is part of an agenda to microchip children. It will never cease to amaze me how far the godless leftist media will go to run interference for human traffickers. They're throwing everything at me now. Tim Ballard, star of the movie about child sex trafficking, said in a recent Instagram post... Um, he said, I just saw a post that seems to be trending in certain places saying that I'm in favor of putting microchips in children so we can track them. It's complete baloney. So uh, I don't know whether you want to put that up there or not. Yeah, I mean, well, there you go. Yep. Uh, real quick, we got a super chat from T Stoney for $10. Angel Studios is doing great with in house productions. The Chosen is a great show, whether you are Christian or not. Dave is right on Risen, too. I'm going to have yeah. to check Risen out. People love The Chosen. I've, I've not watched it myself, but I've heard a lot of people in, in the industry and out of the indus industry say it's a good show. I tried. It's, it's just too boring for me. Well, I mean, it's, so, it's, it's weird to me that, like, we are 
the, the very basis of our culture is Judeo-Christian. And the Bible is full of amazing stories. <laughs> so I don't, That's true. I have no problem. Like I said, I'm obsessed with one day doing a, a, a movie about the book of Job. I don't understand why there's this weird, I mean, I guess I do understand. It's all part of the same political divides that we have everywhere. But I mean, some of the great Hollywood films like Ben-Hur, which I love. I've seen it in 70 millimeter. I, I, it, it's it's a faith based movie. <laughs> you know, let my people go. <laughs> it's come on. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Would you I mean, want to also... Charlton Heston parting the Red Sea in the Ten Commandments? I wouldn't. Yeah. And you could yeah. also argue like someone in, in the chat said earlier that uh, Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade are both faith based movies. Sure, They're totally faith based. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I want to give a big shout out to Leanne Jones for joining our membership. That means we got four more to go to hit our goal. No, actually, I also want to inter interject uh, JT, gifted five subs about 10 minutes ago. That, uh, oh, JT so, thank Gunn. Thank you, JT. Thank you, JT Gunn. Late night with Cap. Uh, Guy is such a match. You. Hey, guys, if you like this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and comment below on your favorite video as well. That goes a long way with helping us boost our channel and get out there in front of more people. And it lets uh, YouTube know that we're doing something right. And if you want to catch us live, we go live two times a week, once on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time and on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So join us there in the chat. We will see you on the live stream. Stay salty.